Hello, in this video we are going to learn about the elements and principles that need to be considered when creating designs. There are eight uh, integral components that need to be considered um, that are called design elements whenever you're thinking of creating a design. We'll talk about each of these individually. The first element is the point. It's the most basic element of design. It has no it has position but has no dimension such as length or width. It can be described by the coordinates on a plane and it's usually used to indicate location. In this example, points are used to represent the joints between bones of possible or of posable 3D characters. This joint representation is part of an animation that an animator uses to manipulate and animate the much more complicated character model. Line is another element that we need to consider in design. It has only a length. It can be used to define a boundary, as in this example right here indicate volume, create perspective or depth as seen in the lines here with the road, how the line is longer closer to you and they get shorter farther away so it makes the picture appear to be fading in the distance even though it's a 2D picture. It can create textures and patterns as we notice here with the star. You can see the horizontal lines back here that are making it the star appear to pop out at you. And then also it can suggest movement or imply emotion. For example, the keyboard here, the way that we've used the wavy cur line, the curvy line on the edge of the p keys, um, makes it look like the piano keys are waving. There are several types of lines that you can use in your designs. Vertical lines represent dignity, formality, stability, and strength. Horizontal lines bring calm and peace and relaxation to your design. Diagonal lines represent action, activity, excitement, and movement. And we use curved lines to help us note, um, convey freedom, um, natural uh, appearance of softness, and a soothing feeling or mood. So let's see how these are used in design. The vertical lines characterize dignity, formality, and strength. So you can see here in this example the Empire State Building um, was constructed using vertical lines to reach high to the sky to show stability and strength. Here at the Brandenburg Gate in Berlin we also see the vertical lines at the base of the gate to represent stability and strength. And this tall skyscraper in Madrid as well has the vertical red lines of the structure going towards the sky to create dig a dignified look for the building. Horizontal lines bring a sense of peace and relaxation to the designs. There is a very well-known architect named Frank Lloyd Wright who has built several buildings in our area. He employed the horizontal line idea in many of his buildings and we can see an example of this in this church picture on the left how he's used these horizontal lines for this terrace to kind of bring a sense of calm and serene to the building. Diagonal lines give the sense of movement, action, and activity. <clears throat> So we see here on this pyramid on the left that um, we have kind of an, it draws your eye or moves your eye towards the top because we follow these diagonal lines from the base of the object up to the top. In this upper right image it shows the Octavio Frias de Oliveira bridge in Sao Paulo, Brazil. It's a cable state suspension bridge which opened in May 2008. It is the only bridge in the world that has two curved approaches, so here's the approaches down here, the road beds, and it's supported by a single concrete mast. And the diagonal lines here bring a sense of action and movement to, about the bridge. Curved lines, flowing curved lines are used in the roof of this apartment building in the roof structure of the Sydney Opera House as we see down here and the Sydney Harbour Bridge in the background as well as in this dog shaped pool toy which illustrates the back and the tail and also we have curved lines up here on his head. 
Curved lines give the sense of freedom, freedom and a soothing mood. The Sydney Opera House, seen here, is a world-famous work of architecture. The Danish architecture Jorn Utzon won an international competition to design the structure. After extensive testing, Utzon decided to use a design based on sections of a sphere. Color is another element that we need to consider uh, in deliberately consider when we are creating our designs. There are several different qualities of color that you need to take into consideration. The first thing is the hue. Hue represents the base color, such as red or purple, blue, green, green, <laughs> orange, or yellow. Another um, characteristic of color is value. Is it light blue or dark blue? And then saturation is another characteristic, which um, refers to the intensity of the color. So is it uh, relative to gray? So how much color is on it? Is it a little bit of color, or is it a lot of color? Color temperature. There are two different kinds of color. There are cool colors, purple, blue, green, and then there are warm colors, red, red, orange, and yellow. Many colors have a cultural, historical, or popular connotation. Green, for instance, has, um, is associated with plants and nature and often implies environmental and ecological awareness. So color has an immediate and profound effect on a design. The fact that they made this Jeep green is showing you that it's a hybrid Jeep that has like an electrical cord. So they're trying, they chose the color green to show you that they're trying to be environmentally conscious. Designers can use these color associations to their advantage and use colors to provoke desired thoughts and emotions. It is important to note right here that we need to um, be aware that different cultures have different meanings for their colors. For example, in the United States, red often means danger. We have seen the signs around that have a red circle with a red slash through it that usually means don't, do not enter, or no walking, and we often associate red with that in the United States. However, in China it doesn't mean danger at all, it means happiness, and so a lot of their hap their New Year's resolutions, and, uh, and it's a symbol of prosperity and happiness, so that's why red is associated a lot in the Chinese culture. Value. Value refers to the lightness or darkness of a color. So this rubber ducky on the left has more value than this rubber ducky on the right. Sort of kind of refer it to it kind of like transparency. Value allows us to perceive shapes and the illusion of 3D objects on a 2D surface. In this example, the artist has created a concept sketch of the interior of a vehicle. Shading, as we see here in this corner, provides the gradations of value that produce a 3D effect on a flat piece of paper. Shape. Shape is a 2D area enclosed by lines or curves. Types of shapes are geometric, as we see here, the geometric shapes you're familiar with. Mechanical, which are simple shapes, but they're made of straight and curved lines. And then organic shapes are natural or simulate nature. So even though this picture right here in the black does not look like a leaf, it was inspired by this shape of a leaf, and so that's why it's considered organic. Organic shapes are frequently used in consumer products. The most efficient shapes for performing specific tasks can often be found in nature. What organic shapes can you see in this product? What could be the inspiration back here for these shapes? Form is another element of design. Form is different from shape in that it is a 3D volume or solid. It's often implied on a 2D surface as we see in the images below, but 
They use a careful use of value to help achieve this, but form is three-dimensional. Here we see geometric form. Here we can see um, mechanical form, and here we can see different types of form. The Oriental Tower, seen here on the left, is a television tower in Shanghai and includes 15 observatory levels and a revolving restaurant. Its design includes 11 spheres, large and small, and the two largest spheres shown have a diameter of 164 feet for this sphere and 148 feet for this sphere. The design is based on the Tang Dynasty poem Pippa Song by Bai Zhui about the wonderful sprinkling sound produced by a pippa instrument, sounding like pearls, big and small, falling on a jade plate. The pyramids have a distinctive pyramid form. So here's another form, 3D, um, geometric. Note that this 2D image gives the impression of 3D objects due to the different values on adjacent surfaces of the pyramids. This is lighter here and it's darker here. Lighter value here, darker value here. Space. Areas between and around parts of an object or image are the implied depth in that image. There's two types of space, positive space and negative space. Over here in the pictures you can see an example here of positive space. So we appear to see the depth in this area because of the detail on this shape. This is negative space. We don't see, we get the depth from the surroundings, not from the actual space. What would you consider, in this picture of people dining in a restaurant, what would you consider to be the positive negative space in this photo? I consider the negative space to be this area around them, the walkway that goes through and I consider the positive space to be the diners because we get a real sense of depth, the smaller hat and the larger body to show that in the different values on the tables to show the depth of the table to the chairs. Ev space is also evident in images with depth. Architectural elements are often helpful in identifying the different levels of space. Note the progression from the foreground through middle ground to the background in this image taken in Venice. The space appears somewhat cramped and constricting. In contrast, this image gives the feeling of an open, uncluttered space. The perception of depth is caused by the one-point perspective view back here in the background. Note that the depth lines recede towards a single point, so everything is going all of these depth lines are going back to a single point. And then also we have the adjacent horizontal lines that between the flooring panels that seem to get closer together as we get farther away. The distance from this line to this line is farther because it's close to me than the distance between this line and this line. And that's how we create depth on it to look three-dimensional on a 2D picture. By incorporating the use of space in your design, you can enlarge or reduce the visual space. Another element is texture. This is the surface look or the feel. Even in pictures, even though we can't actually feel it, we can convey a smooth or rough texture in our designs. Smooth tends to reflect more light, as we can see in these two pictures, and here I can see some reflection and it is more intense in color. It will have um, a deeper color. Rough tends to absorb more light. So we see here this looks rough, this looks rough, a little bit rough, and they appear to be darker. Here's an example of smooth texture on the exterior facade of Disney's Concert Hall in Los Angeles versus a rough texture as shown here from a picture of a structure in Barcelona, Spain. And then we have a cute little fluffy uh, duck here, or chick. 
So those were the elements of design. Many principles of design add to an interesting design. So these are things that we add to the elements to bring interest. Let's talk about these further. First one are, um, is balance. We have phys visual and physical balance. The distribution of elements within the design is what we're considering to be balance. And again, there are several types of balance, symmetrical, asymmetrical, and radi radial. Just as objects have a physical weight dependent on the mass of the item, objects also have a visual weight based on the area, color, and other elements of design. This is an example. Here are three examples of symmetrical or formal balance. The elements within each design are identical in visual weight and in relation to a center line or an axis. If we draw a line through the middle of each picture, we can see that we have balance from the left to the right. Even here with the food making a face, if we draw a line through the center, we have balance from the left side to the right. And we can see here in the Taj Mahal, um, that if we draw through the center, we have some balance on the left side and on the right. The Taj Mahal ma mausoleum, it's a, is interesting to note, was designed as a tomb by Emperor Shah Jahan for his young wife, Mimatz Mahal. With the onion domes, as we see here, these are the onion domes, it is a famous example of Islamic ar architecture. Another type of balance is asymmetrical or informal balance. The Im elements in the design are not identical, as seen in this picture on the left, but are arranged to provide a balanced visual effect. The image of red square over here on the right illustrates asymmetrical balance because the larger structure is closer to the center. This structure is closer to the center. While St. Basil's Cathedral in the background over here is a smaller visual weight and is farther from the center of the image. So that's how we've tried to balance informally. Radial balance is the distribution of components in a circular pattern around a center point. So we can see that here in this example of the wheel to a car. The pattern, it's kind of like circular pattern that we've been um, using in Inventor all centers around this central point. In this dome at the Dresden Fronkirk in Germany, we can see we have a center point here, and then we have radial symmetry all around as we have different uh, patterns around this center focal point. And we can see it here in the use of the balconies too, as well. Emphasis is another principle of design that we can incorporate into our elements. It's used to draw attention to one particular area. So look at these two pictures and determine what is the focal point in each compo composition and how is that focal point or emphasis achieved. A focal point is the feature in a design that attracts the eye. So what is cause attracting our eye in the left image? You can see there's a ceiling mosaic here. This is the Parc Gruel in Barcelona, Spain. And the mosaic is emphasized through a contrasting color as the rest of the ceiling is white and the mosaic is colorful. It's also emphasized through texture. So we can see the different uh, curved lines up here that are providing texture to the ceiling as well as the different uh, materials between the columns and the ceiling. In the composition, the fact that the person is looking towards the mosaic is also causing the viewer to follow his line of sight and creating emphasis on that part of the composition. In this right image, a contrast in value and shape attract your eye. The yellow line of the tightrope tight causes the eye to move towards the dark figure, as well as the blurred shapes in the middle versus the little more defined shapes in the outside. So that's bringing your eye towards what's not blurry. Here's an example of emphasis used in the real world. What's the focal point of this device? I believe this is the focal point of the device. How do I know that? How was this emphasis achieved? 
Well, they made this part, notice how the rest of the car and the th and is black or silver, and we've made this part that we want to emphasize a bright red. Why would I want to emphasize this particular part? So that people can be safe and use their seat belts, and now they know where to find the um, place to insert their seat belt on their, against their black leather seats. Another principle is contrast. Contrast is referring to the degree of relative difference between the elements. Here we can see a contrast between these four pillars. This is a contrast in color. Three of them are green and one is red. This image over here contrasts in value, texture, size, and shape. So we can see a lighter color versus a darker color creates contrast. The texture of this building is different from the texture of this building. That's creating contrast. And different styles of the two buildings. We have Victorian um, style high rise here, and then we have a more modern sleek skyscraper here. This image at the bottom shows contrast between the natural and the man-made objects, as well as a contrast in texture the leafy textures around and the smooth texture of the ornament versus the contrasting color. We have some pinks and reds again and we have greens. Contrast can be used to emphasize an element of a design. In these line drawings the designer provides emphasis with fills of color on an otherwise very neutral composition so that he can show you the details of the design that he wants you to emphasize. Rhythm is the repeated use of lines, shape, color, texture, or a pattern. It seems to tie the whole pattern or sequence together. They have to all work together as we see here in this sheet music. There are four different types of rhythm. Regular, random, gradated, and graduated. Regular rhythm is when an element is repeated at the same repetition or interval. We can see that here in this example of a stone pathway as we seem to have a continuous pattern in each row of the tiles and the blue tiles appear to be approximately the same distance apart. Also we have regular rhythm here not only with the shape of the roof line but also with the pattern they've chosen to repeat on the front of each section of building. Random rhythm is the repetition of the element is random or situated at irregular intervals. We can see that here with these broken pieces of concrete caught in reinforcing steel. It's random rhythm because there doesn't appear to be a pattern, but it does show rhythm because it's still concrete and steel. The repeated use of the onion domes here on St. Basil's Cathedral creates a random rhythm in the design as well as the choice, even though they've used different colors, the onion domes, since they're all onion domes, tend to seem to unify um, the architecture and create some random rhythm because we have different heights and styles. Gradated rhythm is the repeated element um, which is identical with the exception of one little detail that usually is increasing or decreasing. For example, the element here is size. We have several different rocks and they are increasing in size if you go from the top to the bottom. Same rock but getting larger. Here we use size uh, to create gradated rhythm. However, we're also using focus. This little doll is it more in focus than this one, and this one is a little more in focus than this one. This little doll is a little more in focus than this one. So you can see how we can use something besides size to create gradated rhythm. Graduated rhythm is when the repeated element becomes closer together or farther apart. What is the repeated element in this picture? You're right, it's these little circles. How does this image display 
um, graduated rhythm because here we have space between the circles but here we don't so there is some rhythm and we have sp a huge space between the circles here to allow for the girl to stand here so that's what brings emphasis into this design and pulls your eye to her it's the graduated rhythm proportion proportion is the comparative relationship between elements with respect to size so here we see a proportion as this little figure is smaller than this weather vane. Scale is the proportion or size of an element in relation to the other elements. So here, because of its height, the Washington Monument is the most prominent structure in Washington, D.C. So we've used the scale, the size, in relation to the other elements to, um, ex to show its importance. It's also shown with the Lincoln Monument here or Lincoln Memorial in the foreground here and we can see the US Capitol in the background. This monument is called an Egyptian obelisk and it stands 555 feet 5 and 1 8 inch tall. Unity. I've mentioned this several times throughout our presentation and it's the consistent use of design elements. Many colleges, as seen in this picture here, achieve a sense of unity throughout the campus by consistently using specific materials. West Virginia University in Morgantown uses red brick. See this picture? This is a picture of West Virginia University. Notice that the red brick used in the buildings is also used in the landscape walls in the foreground. This is how the campus achieves unity and lets you tell where the campus uh, perimeters are because the, the unity in the structure and buildings will change once you're off campus. How is unity achieved in this landscape design? You should notice the repetition of color. All of the plants are green. The grass is green. The planters are green. And the same plants. All the plants tend to be about the same. We have a lot of trees, a lot of shrubs. And then even though it seems to be a little bit random and spontaneous, the curved paths, since they're repeated on both sections of the pond, also show um, unity in this design. These Russian dolls are created individually, however we have unity because we have the consistent use of size, they're all the same size, they're all the same shape, and they all use the same color palette. Economy. Economy is the use of the bare minimum of elements. It's used by removing extraneous elements that are maybe not necessarily to the design but just provide extra detail. The idea here is that in simplicity there is beauty and the less is more mentality. The principle of economy promotes simplification of the elements of design to express a message. Using extraneous elements in a design can be distracting and confusing for users. If you can remove an element within a design and the design still accomplishes the goals within the constraint, you have practiced economy of design. This graphic sign ha provides a good example of economy because they have simplified a complex idea with only the essential details. In the design process, many products include meticulous details. For instance, the design of a vehicle involves details on mechanics, electronics, ergonomics, visual appeal, materials, etc. Designers will focus on a basic element in the beginning stages of a design, as seen here in this um, concept sketch, and this is a form of economy of design. They've narrowed it down to just one element. Here you can see concept sketches for just the exterior shape of a concept vehicle. A matrix can often help you analyze the visual characteristics of an object and identify the use of the visual elements and principles of design. This example documents the visual elements and principles of design evident in the soap dish. First, we need to identify the elements of design seen here. For instance, the shapes used in this design 
are geometric, rectangular, and circular. The color is green and red. Lines used are straight, but also curved. Once the elements of design are identified, then you can determine how they demonstrate principles of design. So the lines, the curved lines on the top, contrast with the straight lines on the edges. So the lines provide contrast. Here, we can say that the shape provides rhythm. Regular rhythm, because it's the same on the left as it is on the right, symmetric, is created by the repeated use of these circle, circular holes. Now you're going to do the assignment where you take and you find some objects of your own and you try to identify these elements in the design and then let me know how these elements are used to follow these principles.